Hello and welcome to my guide for the Shav Pride. The Shav Pride is the fourth boss in the Siege of Orgrimmar and is the last boss of the first wing. Now its main mechanic is called Pride, and Pride is tracked on your additional action bar. You gain Pride when you're hit by certain abilities, and uh, one of the boss's abilities has a different effect on you based on your Pride. It's pretty much a single fight, uh, like a single phase fight with a burn section at the end. You deal with the mechanics, make sure you don't die, survive to the burn, burn the boss down. That's pretty much it. Now in this guide I'll go through part 1, which is the main fight, all the different abilities, that sort of thing, then I'll talk about the burn phase, and finally give you some advice on positioning and then a general overview of the fight. If you want to navigate around the video, the buttons to the side have annotations on them and you can do that. Now, let's get into it. So, abilities. Um, Neuroshen is a friendly NPC, and you'll see him before you engage the boss. What he does is he periodically gives people a buff called Mark of the Titans. This gives immunity and pride gain. When two people with this stack, they both get a 15% buff to haze damage and healing done. Now the reason I'm talking about this first is because it has one or two bearings on a few of the different abilities further on in the fight, but right now all you need to know is he buffs two people and those two people are immune to pride gain and get some damage things. Now, let's cover tanks. The boss has an ability called Wounded Pride. This causes any melee hits from the Shah to give the target 5 pride. When this happens, you want to tank swap so the tanks don't get ridiculous amounts of pride because that leads to complications. Corrupted Prison is also quite simple. Two players will be teleported to two of the big circular things on the ground that are at the four corners of the room. Uh, one player to each of them. There's three big buttons on the side and they'll glow, I think, blue when a player stands on them. So to free the person who's inside the prison, a player must players must stand on two of the three prison or two of the three buttons. It's just because it's uh, it's ten normal, so that's it's only two people. Now when a player is in prison, anyone within twelve yards of the prison takes heavy damage, so you don't want to stand near the prison until you actually have to run and hit the button. Players in the prison will take shadow damage per second and gain five pride per second. It's absolutely imperative that you get these people out as quickly as possible. The way we dealt with it is that we assigned two people to free each of the two prisons. So we had four people, two to each prison, and every time it came up they just did that and the mechanic was dealt with. This one isn't too troublesome if I'm honest. The next thing is called Mark of Arrogance. Now this is a dot with an unlimited duration that can stack, and dispelling it gives five pride. Now this is why I talked about Mark of the Titans earlier. The healer who has Mark of the Titans should dispel this as they're going to be immune to pride gain. This means that your healers aren't getting ridiculous amounts of pride, and really that just makes the whole fight easier, because once you start getting high pride, things spiral out of control. Then his next ability is called Self Reflection. This is a 20 minute, sorry, a 20 second cast into the fight and then does it about every 60 seconds after that. It summons a whole bunch of small adds at the location of players. When they uh, fully spawn, they do high damage to anyone within 2 yards. Basically, a little effect forms in your feet, a few seconds later they pop out, and if you're inside those little puddles on your feet when they pop out, you'll take high damage and gain 5 pride. So when this is used, the group will be stacked, because the best way to fight this is stacked. So as soon as self-reflection comes up, the group spreads, the adds pop up, and you stack again. Anyone who has misdirections, etc. should send them over to the off tank, and then you just AoE them down. Nice and simple. The next ad is called a Manifestation of Pride. These will come every 60 seconds and you'll see them, there's this like little chamber thingy at the back of the room, uh, at least the way we were positioned, and that's where it'll spawn. Now they do Mocking Blast, which is an interruptible nuke that gives 5 pride to the target, and another ability called Last Word, which gives 5 pride to the two nearest players to it when it dies. It can be stunned, silenced, and interrupted. On 10 man, it took us two hunters to deal with it. Now many guides have recommended tanking these, but honestly, we just found we didn't have to. We were in a raid with four hunters, I know not the best comp, and we could use our three second stun to completely negate these adds. So if you do have any stuns in your raid, I'd highly recommend doing that. The next ability is called Swelling Pride. Now this is cast every 60 seconds and it'll do high raid wide damage and give you five pride. And it'll give the following, do the following abilities based on your pride. So if you have 0 to 24 pride, it does nothing other than the normal raid wide shadow damage. If you have from 25 to 49, you will get bursting pride. For this, a pool of, um, well, a void zone pretty much, forms at your feet, which will explode after 5 seconds, doing very high damage to anyone inside it, and giving 5, five pride to those inside it. Now, since your raid will be stacked, you'll get a whole bunch of these on top of each other. That means if you're in, if you're still inside there, you're going to die. That way, all you have to do is when this happens, you spread, you come back. 
Now, mostly for our raid we were dealing with Bursting Pride, I don't actually think any of our players got projection. However, projection is simple to get. You get projection at uh, 50 to 74 pride, and it will create a projection of the player 15 yards away from them. After 6 seconds it explodes doing high raid wide damage and giving, giving everyone 5 pride, so um, the way to deal with this is that the player who gets the projection needs to walk inside, the project inside their own projection. That way it will not explode and do that high rate wide damage. Honestly, we didn't even meet this that much, so it was okay. From 75 to 99 pride, you will get Aura of Pride. This is a debuff that makes you do high raid wide damage to anyone within 5 yards and giving 5 pride to whoever it hits. Now if you do manage to get this much pride, then honestly there may be issues with how the way your raid's like um, dealing with this. But if you do get it, you need to just run outside of your group as quickly as possible because that will really murder people. Now if you manage to get 100 pride, you'll be mind controlled permanently and your raid will have to kill you. Honestly, if it's 100 pride, it's pretty much a raid wipe. Now uh, we did find that we never really got above 50 pride, so it was very easy to deal with this. We simply were, you know, we get, um, we get all our bursting prides, we'd split, then after they explode, we stack. And that was the entire mechanic done with, other than the raid-wide shadow damage with which the healers have to deal with. Now, phase 2. It's not really phase 2, it's just the bottom 30% of the boss. Once you hit 30%, he will do an ability called Unleashed. This does 250,000 shadow damage to everyone within to everyone every 10 seconds for the rest of the fight. Now, this will reset your pride to 0. Every tick of this will give you 5 pride, so you hit 30%, your pride goes to 0, and from that point onwards, 250k shadow damage every 10 seconds and 5 pride. So what you need to do on this is stack, AoE heal and burn the boss down. Now be wary that the usual mechanics still apply, so the various adds, the prisons, that kind of thing. The only thing is that since you're taking that much more raid wide damage, you really want to deal with them quickly and efficiently so that you can be stacked for as long as possible to benefit from all those nice AoE heals. Now part 3, positioning and the overview for the fight in general. Now the raid will stack behind the boss with the main tank on the other side, directly opposite them. This means that gifts of the Titans will be stacked pretty much instantaneously, allowing you um, to get pretty much the full benefit from that. Now uh, you are away, in this position you're also away from the Titan prisons and you are close to where the manifestation of pride spawns. It means there's not as much movement as there otherwise could be. Since you are stacked, you need to be sure to spread on things such like self-reflection or pride and bursting pride. Also, I should probably mention that you want to stack within melee range, just, you know, so the melee range, everyone's together, and uh, all those AoE heals and great stuff. So essentially, the quick TLDR overview, um, if you just want a little refresher. So essentially, DPS should kill ads whenever they see them. Tanks should swap. Healers should dispel Mark of Arrogance when they have Gift of the Titans. People should spread when small ads spawn when Bursting Pride etc happens so that they are and they also need to be very ready to free people from the prisons. Other than that it should be a relatively okay boss fight. We found this to be substantially easier than Nourishen and really once again this is one of those fights where it's just about having a relatively meh sort of complex uh, group of instructions that I've presented to you here and if you uh, if you execute these perfectly, if you execute them correct, nobody makes mistakes this should be a very clean kill. Um, I just say one thing, you really you just want to minimize your pride. Because the pride abilities, as they go higher and higher, it's it's just like a snowball effect, you know? The more people that get aura of pride or projection, the whole thing just gets more sloppy and harder to deal with. So as much as possible, do try to stay under that 49 pride. Good example of how to do this, say um, that uh, that ad that does it gives five pride to the two people when it dies. Ideally, you'd want to be rotating your players in and out so that people don't get above 50. Stuff like that. Really, have a good shot before the fight. Good uh, good bit of uh, planning by your raid leader. Should be an easy kill. And that's it for me. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next time. Bye.